What causes limerence triggers? And if you're experiencing that, or maybe your wife, or your girlfriend, or your boyfriend, or your husband, if they're experiencing that, what can you do about it? That's what we're getting into today in this video. Hi, I'm Jeff Campbell from divorcedparentsclub.com, and I'm glad you're here with me. So I've done a lot of videos on limerence, but I haven't done any recently. So this is kind of getting back to an old favorite subject of mine. Limerence, of course, is when you've got an obsessive tunnel vision for someone else that's not your primary partner. And it is usually, but it doesn't have to be, but it's usually born out of an affair when you are interested in someone else other than your spouse or your boyfriend or your girlfriend. It's not love and it's more than lust, but it's all encompassing and, and you just can't think about anything else other than this other person. It's extremely unhealthy and it does have an expiration date if you're not familiar with the concept of limerence. But in today's video, we're looking at what triggers limerence because if we know ahead of time what triggers it and we're prone to it or maybe our girlfriend or boyfriend is prone to it or our husband or wife then maybe we can learn to stop it before it gets started because it can have devastating effects that doesn't mean it's not possible to save a relationship that has had a limerent affair you can but it's much, much harder. And it's a whole lot easier if we can cut it off at the pass before it actually gets going. Limerence, of course, is caused initially by low self-esteem. And often there's a childhood attachment wound behind that. But essentially we feel unloved and unlovable and unworthy. And someone comes along who makes us feel lovable and worthy. And we develop this kind of unhealthy codependent relationship with them where they're feeding this empty hole inside of us. And it's like a bucket with a hole at the bottom. You can never really fill it. But this person is somehow making us feel like they can fill it. And we're drawn to them like a moth to the flame because of that. I'm going to go through six of the most common triggers that can cause limerence to crop up. The first is unfulfilled emotional needs. And again, limerence is often born out of an affair, but it doesn't have to be, but usually it is. So if you're with someone in a relationship and they're just not meeting your emotional needs, or maybe you've been together for a long time and over time, the relationship has kind of become blase and complacent, and it's just not challenging or stimulating or fulfilling anymore. And that is common in long-term relationships. The next is, of course, physical attraction. There has to be a component of physical attraction to this other person, but usually it's not just physical attraction. There's something else at work. Maybe it's the sound of their voice. Maybe it's the way they interact with you. Maybe it's their flirtatious nature. Maybe it's their habits. There's something else aside from just the physical that you are drawn to. And it also could be coinciding with that complacency in your current relationship where the other person that you're with in your primary relationship has let their appearance go. Maybe over time they've gained weight or maybe they don't dress to impress anymore. Maybe they just sit around the house in shorts and a t-shirt drinking beer and they're 20 pounds overweight. Whatever it is, it's probably in conjunction with that that you're finding this other person irresistibly physically attractive, and there's an emotional component there too. The next is that there is mystery and maybe some boredom on your part if you're the person experiencing limerence, but you like that mystery and that intrigue of this new person. And again, if you've been in a long-term relationship that's gotten complacent, it's kind of gotten boring and stale possibly. And this new person, you haven't quite figured them out yet. And there's an intrigue there that you want to explore that you're desperately drawn to. And we might even feel compelled to act out of fear that, you know, if we don't do something, we're going to totally miss out on this amazing experience that we could have with them. The next one is that they remind us of another ex, somebody from our past, maybe the quote unquote one that got away. And there's something about them, maybe physically, maybe emotionally, maybe the way they speak, the sound of their voice. There's something about them that reminds us of them. And chances are it's an ex where we have unfinished business unrequited feelings that just we never got to resolve and we're still holding on 
respond to those. And we see this new person and they remind us of that and remind us of that person. And we sort of feel like it's a second chance at doing all of the things that we wanted to do with that ex that we never got a chance to do. And we might even try and recreate certain aspects of that old relationship with this new person, going places, doing things that sort of bring it full circle. And then the last one of the six signs is that there is a shared trauma experience. Could be something that happened, maybe the death of a loved one, maybe some sort of debilitating accident that left us disfigured or disabled in some way, some sort of trauma bond that you have and this other person has, and you're connected over that trauma. And when you have that kind of traumatic shared experience, it can cause you to really feel an intense connection with them that you just aren't going to feel with somebody else who doesn't have that shared shared experience. And then that intense shared experience can create intense vulnerability. And over time, that vulnerability can go from emotional intimacy into physical intimacy. Now, in a minute, I'm going to get into how to stop limerence before it even gets going. But first, if you like this video and you want to see more videos like it, please hit that like button for me. It sends a great signal to YouTube. They show my videos to more people just like you. I get to help more people and you help me grow my channel. So thank you very much for doing that. Please do it right now. So if it's you that is vulnerable to the limerence, what I'm about to share is how to stop it before it starts. If it's your spouse or your boyfriend or your girlfriend, that's a little different. You really can't make them do anything until they are at the point where they recognize the problem and they are willing to take action. Now you can, of course, bring it to their attention. You can, of course, suggest that the two of you go to therapy, things like that. But until they're actually ready to do that, it's kind of like if your boyfriend or your girlfriend is an alcoholic, they're never going to go to Alcoholics Anonymous until they recognize it's a problem. You can tell them it's a problem all you want until they feel it and they know it and they acknowledge it. They're never going to really get the help that they need. Let's help you though if you're in the situation where you think you might be vulnerable for limerence. And if you want to, you can even share these things with your spouse or your boyfriend or girlfriend if it is them that is vulnerable. The first is being self-aware. And I mentioned an alcoholic a minute ago. It is very much like that, that self-awareness, that moment of clarity where the alcoholic recognizes that, you know what? I am an alcoholic. They maybe haven't quit drinking yet, but they have recognized and acknowledged that they are indeed an alcoholic. And that's great. That means they're halfway to solving their issue when they have that moment of clarity and they recognize and acknowledge the problem. Because a lot of us go through life never really fully owning and acknowledging the issues that we have inside of us. So being able to see that and recognize it is awesome. The next, of course, is that you recognize and acknowledge the triggers that I just went through and you put yourself in situations where those things are less likely to happen. You avoid situations where they might happen. Going back to the alcoholic, if the person that you are drawn to frequents a certain bar or always goes out and does a certain thing, if you recognize the triggers and you want to take action to not go down that road, then you're not going to put yourself in those places and those situations that make you vulnerable. The next is Go no contact with the person who is potentially drawing you in like that. If you've got feelings that are starting to develop, don't feed into that. Block them on your phone if they're in your phone already. If you work with them, it's a little bit of a trickier situation. But the ideal scenario, because this is serious, especially if you are in a committed relationship right now and you want to save and maintain and grow that relationship, you need to take this seriously. And if it were me, I would even go so far as to quit my job and find a new one rather than sacrifice my relationship. But completely go no contact with them. Block them on your phone, block them on social media, block them on email etc. and pretend they don't exist. Now I mentioned at the start of the video that attachment wounds are often at the core of things like limerence. And that is totally true. And, and if you don't know what I mean by attachment wounds, I have a lot of videos that talk about attachment styles. I'm going to put a link to those down below, but you'll see my most popular video on attachment styles right up here. So click that if you want to learn more. Essentially, there are three attachment styles, though. There's the anxious attachment style, which is kind of what I lean towards, where you're kind of nervous. You can be a little clingy and needy, and, and you tend to hold on too tightly out of 
fear of abandonment. Basically, you've got an abandonment wound from your childhood where people left you maybe, and you learned to hold on tightly to people out of fear of being abandoned in your adult years. The next is the avoidant attachment style. This is what my ex-wife is. And the avoidant has that same kind of attachment wound, but they learned that the best way to protect themselves is to keep everybody at arm's length and never let anybody in on an emotionally intimate level. They feel like they can keep themselves safe that way, even though they desperately want love. They just don't know how to get it. And then the third style is secure attachment, where you don't need anybody else's approval to feel good about yourself. You are whole and complete, and you're totally fine being single for a while if that's the way the cards go. And when you do find someone else that is also a secure attachment style person, it's two whole and complete people coming together to enrich each other's lives, not in a codependent mess. And so the best way to kind of work through some of those challenges is to work with a qualified therapist on your attachment wound once you've kind of acknowledged what it is. Then I want you to focus on your current relationship. As I mentioned at the start of this video, a lot of the times over long periods of time in a relationship, we get complacent. We let our appearance go. We stop courting and dating our spouse and, and taking them out and making them feel special. We just kind of get blasé and kind of get bored. I want you to reignite that relationship. Now, you can't do anything other than what you can do yourself. You can't make your spouse do anything, but hopefully if they love you and care about you and you're having some open dialogue, they will want to be reinvested in the relationship too. And lastly, I want you to focus on things that help you calm and center your mind. That could be meditation, could be yoga, could be martial arts, could be going to the gym more frequently. Something that enriches your life in a positive way, helps you stay focused, helps give you mission and purpose and meaning and helps you avoid the distractions of this other person potentially, or if there isn't even another person yet, helps you avoid there being one in the future. I know I've talked a lot about limerence in this video, and if it's a new concept for you, I have several other videos on limerence as well. I want you to check out this one right now because this is my most popular video on limerence where I dive deep into the subject, far deeper than I actually did today. But for now, I'll see you in the next video.